at 4 o'clock we'll get up, we're going to get the plane at 7 o'clock and we're going to go to Amsterdam to, to start our European tour. That's uh, probably the furthest school start. But at the end of the day, it's just another city of elegance. It's going to be wild, it's going to be emotional, I think, more than anything else. It's going to be a real heartstrings fest. It's a total adventure, isn't it? It's like, uh, not many people get to do this, go across, across Europe playing music and stuff. There's going to be some ups and downs, some in and outs, a lot of friends made, a lot of friends lost, but hopefully we'll all do it together because, you know, the way I look at it is it might be the last time that I play these songs, and, and it's probably not, but, you know, it's all about the fans. So. Notice you there, I was too busy reading Chris Jericho's Undisputed in all good retail stores now, worth of a buy. We've just landed in Amsterdam, been up since 4 o'clock, and uh, those beers were definitely a mistake. I was rough as hell. The flight was nice, I tried to sleep, but it was uncomfortable. But we're here now, and I'm uh, feeling optimistic and a little tired. Guess how much I paid for a sandwich and an iron brew? Five pounds for a poxy little sandwich and an iron brew. But now we're wait waiting for our bass and guitar to arrive and we're going to hit the streets. Go to the biggest Burger King in the world apparently. messing up again that we're having to get the train in with the fans. So, uh, uh, Shouldn't have to put this shit on yeah. uh, They're being very good about it though, aren't they? They are. I know. They're giving us our space. I mean, one guy told me, right, thank you. One, one guy told me that he was, he was, I was his hero and it was touching, but you know. He was touching you. <laughs> and, uh, we're rock royalty, we shouldn't have to put up with this. Yeah. Yeah. We've played our dues. We did. We've played in Chardside and Cold Street. <laughs> and... Calling him. Call them. We got Done the big three C's, haven't we? So, so, yeah. so, so now that we come to Amsterdam, we get treated like this. It's not cool. I don't want to be a prima donna, you know, but I feel I'm justified. Yeah, well. My complaint. <laughs> oh, guys, guys, come on. Sorry. All right. Well, luckily we'll get a, a private coach. So mm. We'll keep you updated. So we didn't get that uh, private cabin back. Pretty cramped, if I'm honest. The gear now. <laughs> We're on a train. We're on a train. Um, can't see much, we're still underground. But uh, just enough time, 17 minutes to read. Chapter of Chris Jericho's book now available in all good bookstores. So I'll see you soon. You know, I heard when I, before I got here that you're never short of a ride in Amsterdam, but this really is taking too far. <laughs> Thing called the Rock Jam in Irish High School. I was a big fan of Nirvana at the time, and Kurt Cobain and that. They brought to play guitar, and all the older kids and the math teacher called uh, Chris McDermott, UPS over there, uh, had this band going. So I thought, oh, I'll go to that. I was a bit naive. They all had their electrical instruments, and I had my um, 20 pound nylon string guitar with little spiders for a uh, tune tag. And I remember approaching Matthew nervously and going, uh, uh, do you want to help me unpack your gear? And he looked up at me and went, yeah. and then just completely blanked me. And that was a bit, a bit embarrassing. So I went, I relented, and I went, and I went, and I went. 
One day, one fateful day, the bus broke down on the way home from uh, from the from the school, and I had a Fender magazine, and I was reading it, and I, I was like this, they were at the back with Matthew, so I was going to read the magazine, might buy a Fender, and uh, at which point I saw all this on like, oh, my moment, and he just went, passed it out of my hand, didn't hit me in the face with it though, and just took it up the back, and I was left with no Fender magazine, and uh, then. I heard a bike lift went past and took it off me. And then a couple of days later, he said, "Hey, Paul." He looked up and he went, "Got to come sit up here." And it was like the <laughs> set up the back of the bus. And I walked up one. He's all like, "I'm away." He went out the back and said, "No, we're still with John. Still with John tonight." Yeah, sure, we're still with John. Yeah. He went, "I'll get back to you." Ah, cool, awesome. Met up my beautifully constructed, not makeshift, beautifully constructed shed. And uh, as I said before, mother of the scones. And uh, it must have been two or three times a week we practiced like we the band called the Naked Nuns. And it was, it was really good. And we, we played here and there. Our first gig was in uh, Coburn's Pass, 2004, New Year's Eve. And we and Matthew got lost in the forest. Uh, <laughs> Trying to find the shortcut for the south side of And uh, we ended up just coming out about 200 yards up the road, so pointless endeavour. And <laughs> from there, we started playing here and there. We went in battle bands and lost quite recently because, you know, because of the inside team. Of course, a few years ago, really tight as a band and as, dare I say, as friends. And uh, as Paul mentioned, we did a few battle bands until eventually we won one in 2007, basically because. Uh, Everyone else has had the turn of winning, so came down to us to pick up the prize. So uh, that got us a few gigs in the area, and then decided to expand on that. It's just Castle like Edinburgh. Been around the country a bit, and it's been great. Journey been up since four o'clock in the morning. It's now two o'clock in the afternoon. Got all our gear in that, and uh, well, Gavin says we're getting sweet, yeah. Yes, it's going to be a sweet, sweet Gavin sorted it out. Um, five star apparently. Going to be good. So let's let's do this. Check it out. Complimentary bottle of champagne as well here. Okay, how do I do this? Well, for fuck's sake. Where the fuck's that, Gavin? Flat screen. You did say a flat screen and yeah, they did deliver. Yeah, Maybe not quite the one that I... Yeah. And Riverside Views. Oh, take that in. <laughs> nice one, Gavin. Cheers, bud. <laughs> up with the gig, we're confused because uh, it looks like we're, we're billed as a support slot, but for some reason we are the, the main event. So we're getting that sorted out right now, negotiations are underway with our management. Um, I'm just looking forward to getting a bit of a shower because I've not showered in a few days. I wish you could smell that, but you can't. So we're going to do that, maybe have a couple of beers, chill out, read my Chris Jericho book, which is available in all good bookstores. And uh, if you don't mind, I'm just going to go for a shower. So. 